Hey there, viewers. Uh, recently, I had my first ever opportunity to diagnose an engine misfire. Um, after all the years that I've been driving and owning cars, uh, cars I've raced, cars I've helped people with, motorcycles, I've never had an engine misfire. And of course, uh, that means I've never had the opportunity to diagnose one. Uh, my son's 2003 Mazda 6 with the 2.3 liter engine in it uh, generated a P0301 code, so that's misfire on cylinder one. And uh, he was complaining that the car had no power, was running rough, and was doing funny things when it was trying to shift. So I uh, used my scan tool to verify the code. And while I was doing that, obviously, I was verifying the problem. Uh, it was a super subtle misfire that you could barely feel at idle or in gear, but you could feel it if you uh, would power break the engine. I felt like when it was at its worst, I could hear just a subtle popping uh, out of the tailpipe. Uh, but other than that, if you were to look at the engine at idle, you'd be hard pressed to see that anything was wrong. The uh, scan tool uh, aside from giving me the details of the code, provided no freeze frame data and no misfire monitor information. I was able to go in, obviously, and uh, monitor some of the basic PIDs. Uh, fuel trims were perfect, uh, zero on the short term, and uh, minus 3.1 on the long term. Oxygen sensors were operating normally, and all the other sensors appeared to be uh, fine. So it was uh, up to me to use the Vantage Pro as an ignition scope in order to see and diagnose the problem. Um, I, I videoed my, the entire process of me, you know, uh, diagnosing the problem. Uh, I videoed myself, uh, you know, coming to terms with using the Vantage Pro as a, an ignition scope and also uh, coming to terms with waste spark and what that meant in terms of looking at the signals. Uh, so it was kind of funny and I'll probably release those videos uh, in a couple of different parts uh, just so people can either learn from, learn from them or maybe even just have a good laugh. Uh, so I just wanted to release this video to get right to the point and share the waveforms in case somebody uh, found them useful. So this is a distributorless ignition system on the 2.3 liter engine. Uh, it's a waste spark system, so it's got a coil and wires. It doesn't have coil on plug. Uh, it does not have a separate uh, ignition module. It's apparently uh, integrated into the PCM. Um, so those are just some of the details. Uh, I started out my diagnosis uh, under the hood by verifying 12 volts uh, and engine control from the PCM at the coil. So you've got three wires going into the coil, two of which are signals from the PCM and the other which is 12 volts. Uh, then I uh, used the, of course I did a visual inspection before I did any of this and there was no evidence whatsoever of uh, arcing or problems with the wires or cracks on the coils or loose connectors or nothing like that. Spark plug wells were dry so, you know, visual inspection yielded nothing. Uh, so then I broke out the, uh, the Vantage Pro and uh, looking at the individual cylinders, uh, I was pretty uh, soon able to detect that there was a big difference between cylinders 1 and 4, the signals on cylinders 1 and 4 and 2 and 3. Uh, because it's a waste spark system, uh, one and four are shared, and two and three are shared on the on the on the coil pack. It's a coil pack. It's got two coils, one for cylinders one and four, and one for cylinders two and three. The uh, signal on one and four was distinctly different than the signal on two and three. And uh, just to show you the difference, it's it's crude, but. Uh, so this is what a, uh, a healthy signal would look like. I know that's terrible. Uh, so that's what 2 and 3 looked like. 
and this is what 1 and 4 looked like. And uh, if you look right here, you can see the difference. The uh, energy uh, from the coil was dissipating very, very slowly. Uh, and I don't know exactly what that means inside the coil, but that's exactly what was happening on 1 and 4. And uh, on cylinders 2 and 3, you can see that a normal uh, dissipation occurs uh, with the uh, energy from the coil dropping straight down after all the hydrocarbons are burned and then you've got this slight ringing as the uh, coil settles down and discharges and then prepares to charge again. Uh, so that's just a crude picture and a, just a quick way to, for me to tell you you know what I saw. Uh, so I once I realized that there was an obvious problem with the coil uh, I took an old coil that I had uh, when I bought the car five years ago, put it in, and uh, immediately saw that all the cylinders were operating properly. The uh, coil was discharging uh, after the, uh, the burn time and ringing at the end and then settling down and then preparing to charge again. So uh, what I did then was I cleared the codes, uh, drove the car for 25 miles, and uh, it ran fine. I then let my son drive it, you know, because he's the most familiar with it, and uh, he said it was running fine. So uh, I'm calling it a fix as of right now. Uh, code has not returned. Uh, and of course, the most important thing is that uh, I learned a lot from it. I got to learn a lot about using my Vantage Pro and, uh, you know, just uh, understanding what secondary ignition waveforms uh, look like and what they mean. I do regret that I didn't uh, do any work on the primary side. Um, I think it would have been very revealing to, uh, you know, to see what was going on on that side, especially with the, uh, you know, the, the current inside the coil, but I just didn't get around to it, and I, I kind of regret that. But anyway, uh, so this is just a quick uh, wrap-up, and I'll put the signals up on the screen here afterwards and maybe make a couple of uh, comments on them. And... Uh, Aside from that, like I said, I'll probably release, you know, the entire uh, video of me going through the troubleshooting at a later date, in case that might help somebody. But uh, in the meantime, you know, I hope uh, seeing these waveforms uh, helps you, and uh, thanks for watching.